I'd love to go back in time and just speak to him. I mean, he must have been tough for these old keepers. I mean, I still think he's tough for me. My start still is July, seven days I have two days off of and then I'm working all the way through until February 1st. Yeah. I'll tell you for one, it's the only one I've found with a white bit in its tail. Yeah. I've spoken to Nigel this morning, I've got enough for a rough run He said it is quite, it's quite um, common. But, when, but see how it's wrong? This is one we've already caught, and Nigel said in all his years, it's the first one he's ever caught uh, that have been caught, and he's rung in the wild. You know, he, he's had chicks, he's had chicks, but he's never had um, any caught like we've caught. So this is like a, another service. So I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to take this to Marie. That's called a Kansas cock. Stunning, isn't it? It's stunning. We look at the condition of his tail's perfect. He's a stunning cock. I suppose it wouldn't have shot the volume we shoot. Years ago, you would have had probably a hundred brooders with chickens in, and the pheasant eggs, the fine pheasant eggs, we still do some now, don't we, like the old school, up at my boss's house, we've got seven or eight brooders, and we'll do, we've always had a thing about English partridge, they prefer grassland like this, it used to be an abundance of them, and basically they've just gone extinct because the buzzards have evolved, the foxes have evolved, they're a lot faster, and sadly the English partridge never evolved. And we reared some here for three years on the run, and the most we've seen that were left after was about five. We didn't shoot any. Basically, it was more of a conservation type project to see if we could get a few to actually stay here. And it's out for yourself, so just... They'll be open like that. And these are for magpies and stuff like that. Basically, what we'll do is... And they set like that. So basically, if we'll put a little bit of grass around there, and probably some eggshells, and then as the bird lands to, to pinch the eggs like the magpies, and that's how we get them, you know, like that. And this one is a side entry trap. So what they do is, they're like that. Similar thing with these. You push that down, that shuts it. Same again. I mean, suppose in the olden days, when lots of these people at the hall were, they were doing it not just for pleasure, but I suppose for food. It's still, it's still very similar. It's just the practices are, are changed. And I suppose for the better, I mean, years ago, you'd get them human-type traps. But when they shot, break your legs. Can you imagine an animal in, there? animal in them would be really cruel? Some of the poachers that got stuck in them traps, they'd be there with a broken leg all night and stuff like that. Whereas today's stuff now, with either, we've got Catch Me Alive traps, which are, I've showed you some of those. Some of those would be, me and the fox ones are huge. But at least then they can be dispatched quickly and cleanly, you know. Out of the dark ages now, it's fantastic now. Conservation, it's, it's all about loving where you're working as well. Some gamekeepers will nine to five it, but because we're in partnership with Marie at the farm, we don't rear bears here anymore. So rearing takes a lot of your time. It's seven days a week and you don't really get a break. Whereas this time of year now, we'll come. Tidy up. Tidy, yeah, That's tidy all up. I'm doing, isn't it? You yeah. do the posts and whatever. He'll tidy up, you know, who owns this place. She's a big advocate of like the, the wildlife type side of it, you know. She she wants to shoot it to stay. She's, she, you know, this, this is, even when she passes, she wants it all to stay the same, you know. But So we we do like beetle banks, don't we, mate? Yeah. And we do like trees in, in like triangles uh, just for like the beetles and we leave gaps for the air jogs. We do more more for conservation than people really realise. We're privileged to be able to, sh to shoot on it and keep the shooting going on it. If that means that in the summer we've got to give some back, that's fine by us, you know. Yeah.
We still do the old style. I mean, the last incubator that I had, you could put 3,000 eggs in it at a time. And then every three weeks they'd come out. Then you'd stop the water for the humidity to come up. And then they'd hatch in the tray. Once we let them bears go, they're wild. And that is it. So I'd love to go back in time and just say, look, what was these practices? Because it was kill everything. Anything that had a pair of teeth, anything that could kill their stuff. That has sort of been hell bent on trying to kill it. I say there's a, there's a lot of keepers. Oh no, they'll eat all your birds. Well, I think they put enough down to compensate for that. But magpies, we sort of try and get on them now before all the birds are nesting. We give all the birds a chance. Like I say, you're never going to kill all of the magpies. You'll never do it. And these are for magpies and stuff like that. He's got the Wildlife and Country Act 1981 sign on it, just saying, you know, look, this is bubble board. And he'll get biscuits, and he'll also every day he'll get an egg. Wildlife and Country Act 1981 sign on it, just saying, you know, look, this is we get a bird of prey, and he'll get biscuits, and he'll also every day he'll get an egg. The olden days, so anything he's got full of food, full of water. So at least we've got the choice now to let them go. I mean. Lot yet, we've just started topping the cover crops, but we'll start then and we'll do a lot of ploughing on it ourselves. It's done by us years ago. The gamekeepers would have been side by side with the farmers. We still are now, aren't we? I mean, if Marie gets problems, we'll help her straight away. That side ain't changed, but years and years ago, I mean, the gamekeeper, can you imagine? I'm in two poor. A lot of it, I suppose, would have been done with a horse and a car, but some of these places that are hard to get to, I mean, and I was sort of 15, 16, and I was starting out as a gamekeeper then. I used to run up the hill with 10 bags of food just to feed one place. Uh, you know, like, as I got older, I'd look on the hills, and I'd always look back and I'd think, can you imagine how these old gamekeepers would have had to have walked there, and the four horses that have had to have took all that weight up. I suppose they would have took the food up and then left it there, because there's more you couldn't do in hotels. They'd have had to have had storage bins up there. We had an old side there, but it fell apart and it fell to bits. I think four would have I mean, a lot of them, their cover crops would have been cut by hand. Yeah. You know, we've got a tractor now, we're top up. Yeah, and it's still long hours on that tractor, isn't it? I suppose in the olden days, they'd have had a lot of helpers, but I don't know what perks they've got, other than the rabbits and the, to, to, to feed themselves, yeah. you know, and the game. <laughs> And what they've done is, this this pipe it goes right up into that corner on the pond there that they've made the cells. And then what they've done is, they've dug a trench so the water, instead of coming down the brook, it went into there, into there, and it pumped up to that big house. We have like a curry night. There were eight guns and about, how many of us? Six, eight of eight. 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 Fifteen, weren't there? So there were seven of us, yeah. Yeah, seven of us. But the guns all sat that side, and this was just a coincidence, but the guns all sat there, and the beaters all sat there. Whereas before, I've worked on some shoots, and they'd be eating on their own, yeah. and we'd be sent around the corner, yeah. or we'd be sent home. I know shoots that yeah, still happen to this day, you and you them. never see a gun. I think that's sad, because yeah. there's guys like me and Mick and them that are doing this week in, week out for you. I mean, here, they'll always come and say thank you, won't they? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's more, this is more of a family type shoot. But you, you'll always get these guys, they'll always come and show their appreciation. It'd be great for me to say, yeah, I'm the head keeper here, and, and it's all done by me, but it's not. It's the lads in the back that people don't see. You know, I like working on my own. I love working with people, I think that's great. But there's some jobs you can't work on your own, you have to work with folks. But there's other times I like to go and work on my own because it's peaceful. Birds here are really well looked after in them. It's, it's, it's just like anything. You know, if you've got an animal, if you've got a dog at home, you want him to look the best. You're going to look after it the best you can. It's like one of your family members. And it's the same, there's no difference here. There's little bits that we do for these birds, like worming them and stuff like that. Putting the grits out the to, to put out just for the birds. A lot of shoots don't even put grits out. But if you want it to work right, you know, you've got to put a bit in there. I suppose years ago, they wouldn't have had none of that, would they? Uh, you know. I was always fascinated in gamekeeping. I went round this place and I seen rooks and crows and, and magpies all hanging from this wire. Yeah. I was saying, oh, this is my boss. This is my boss just showed up, but he is a guy, what he does. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and they used to have, like, you know, in the olden days, they used to have what's called a snake belt. If they got a bird or, or, or they killed someone to show off, they used to get the belt from Mark Last. Trappies had to and walk along with, showing how good they are and how successful they are in trapping and stuff. We don't know. The whole just gets dispatched like the boy in the fire. Them old gamekeepers, they must have had it tough. Bet if you look back, you'd see no end where poachers and gamekeepers have clashed. And, they, and you know, if you try to stop them, they'd want to kill you. They were poaching you to, to feed the families. And you'd be shot at and stabbed, I mean, and hit. It's better for us as gamekeepers than in the olden times where you would have been killed for the sake of the defense. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.